lay out what the proceedings look like. Former President Trump is endorsing Ohio Congressman and House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan to become the next Speaker of the House. Trump praising Jordan on Truth Social yesterday, writing this, he is strong on crime, border, our military vets, and the Second Amendment. He will be a great Speaker of the House and has my complete and total endorsement. Yesterday, the former president said that he planned on attending the House's uh, forum this coming Tuesday and, and pitching himself as a temporary Speaker until the Republicans can unite behind one candidate. The GOP conference is also planning to have an in-person meeting on Monday night ahead of Tuesday's forum. I'm looking at a uh, Cowan Washington research report this morning and the analyst there says we're unlikely to have a resolution on the speaker by the vote next Wednesday which means continued paralysis in the house. We, ha we now have 42 days before the government runs out of money. Here we go again. You know the, the whip count before President Trump's announcement was pretty even with Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan of the members who were publicly saying that they were endorsing one or the other. Uh, I think that last night's endorsement from President Trump is going to cause a surge of House Republicans who are going to be willing to and want to come out publicly and support Jim. Quite frankly, there might be some members who might end up not supporting him because of it, but uh, I think that he'll get more support than not. Uh, it's also worth pointing out, President Trump made a big deal of uh, Jim Jordan's excellent wrestling career. Yeah. Uh, apparently, this <laughs> is very important to President Trump as well. That's right. That's um, right. Th these are, uh, you know, Jim uh, has been leading the oversight. And and listen, it, it's well, he's, a, he's the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan. And yeah. a lot of people are wondering where those investigations stand. Should he become speaker? Who's going to take the chairman of the Judiciary Committee? Maybe it ends up helping even more. You know, listen, if, if Hunter was watching Cheryl explaining that uh, President Biden and, and, and G are going to meet again, Hunter's thinking, uh, you know, I owe all this money in legal bills <laughs> and he starts coming up with ideas. If you have a speaker, Jim Jordan, maybe that prevents Hunter from clicking send on that WhatsApp message saying, hey, you know, dad's coming over. Don't don't make me tell him that you're not paying off my 10 million. Yeah, great point. Um, but, but look, this but analyst at important. Cowan is writing this. Trump's name has been floated, though, per House GOP rules. I want to get your take on this. Mm -hmm. Per the rules, he is not currently permissible as they require a leader to step aside if indicted for a felony that carries the potential of two plus years in prison. So how does that play into all of this? Well, the, this is what the Cowan analyst is pointing out. Exactly. The politics of the trials, of the, the tribulations that are happening in courts yeah. uh, against the former president. Exactly. I thought it was interesting. I did love the, the Truth Social post to your point, Lee, when you talked about, about Jim Jordan's sports career. Uh, but at the same time, I think what's interesting is that with, with, with Steve Scalise and with Jim Jordan as well, these are both very powerful, strong voices. It seems there seems to be a lot of support for both, Lee. Maybe, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, but and I know there's others that are thinking about get, putting their ring in the hat, but I think for, for the markets and for the American people, it'd be nice to get a resolution yeah. sooner rather than later. And even if there are members supporting Scalise or Jordan, that doesn't mean that they're a no for the other person on the floor. Mm. And the thing is, though, you need 217 votes. There are a couple of vacancies right now. Um, but the big question is whether or not whoever gets the voting conference, getting a majority of the conference, I, th I could see that happening on Wednesday. Going to the floor and getting 217, that's a whole other challenge. Steve Scalise has the advantage of not just being a majority leader. He used to be the whip. There's a big whip operation. The majority whip, Tom Emmer, is supporting him. Yeah. So that infrastructure definitely helps him. But I, I think that President Trump's endorsement uh, is something that will give Jim momentum today. I think with a lot of members who will be coming out publicly in support. Them. So many things that they're going to have to navigate with this speaker race. Number one, the rules change on the motion to vacate. That was so unfair what happened to Kevin McCarthy. The fact that eight people on the Republican side could get all the Democrats rallied with them uh, to actually take out the speaker. So this is probably a priority for a number of GOPers and the centrists to prevent another, you know, Groundhog's Day where you've got one person leading a revolt the way Matt Gates did yeah. for yeah. Kevin McCarthy. So that's going to be something that definitely they're going to try to change, I bet. And there are people who are talking about the House Republican Conference as if they're all in disarray and it's all chaos. The reality is 96 percent of the House Republican Conference was united behind Kevin McCarthy. It wasn't it wasn't like it was some big silver war and every man for himself and Kevin McCarthy had 30 percent standing. He had almost 100 percent. But because of this motion to vacate, it wow. wasn't enough. And Marie, I'm glad you brought up the market perspective in all of this, because and you were pointing this out, I believe, yesterday that we're, we're coming up against another budget deadline in November. That's right around the corner. Yeah, 42 and days. How many, and how many got days? 42 are, days. How many days are they going to be working?
are they actually going to be on the calendar working in yeah. those days? And that makes the market nervous. The other issue that they're no doubt going to be talking about is Ukraine funding, right? 117 House Republicans voted against the Ukraine funding. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that was last week. That accounts for 27 percent of the House. Jordan voted against the Ukraine uh, aid as well as the uh, continuing resolution. Scalise voted for both. Yeah, and then that's the problem is fiscal responsibility. I'd say if you look at it right now, that's why the 10-year Treasury is getting close to 5%, right, because we don't have people that are fiscally responsible in Congress. So I, I think that's going to be a huge issue, especially as we get closer to the election, is everyone's getting really, really aware of the fact that the co Congress spends way too much money, you know, and that's, that's why we're seeing the bond vigilantes right now really raise interest rates and you know when that debt becomes to a point where a percentage of the net interest margins that we're, we're just paying on that interest becomes so big um, you know everybody's watching that and I think that's going to be a huge huge part of uh, you know the campaigns coming up already in the interest paid on the debt I believe is more than what we spend on defense right I mean defense it's is crazy. what 126 billion is that yeah. it, that and it curb the surge of illegal crossings at our southern border <laughs> good luck yeah and the White House battling backlash over plans to restart border wall construction the president saying they had no choice mm. <laughs> Lucas Thomason is live at the White House with the latest. Is that true, Lucas? It is true, Lawrence. And about face, as Carly just said, in a dramatic reversal, President Biden says he has no choice but to move forward with the construction of some new border wall, something he vowed repeatedly not to do in the past two years. Here he is yesterday. And one question on the border wall. The border wall, the money was appropriated for the border wall. I tried to get them to reappropriate, to redirect that money. They didn't. They wouldn't. And in the meantime, there's nothing under the law other than they have to use the money for what was appropriate. I can't stop that. Do you believe the border wall works? No. Now, AOC disagrees with the president, posting the Biden administration was not required to expand construction of the border wall, and they certainly were not required to waive several environmental laws to expedite the building. The president needs to take responsibility for this decision and reverse the course. Biden's DHS chief says Congress is to blame, not the White House. Day one, this administration has made clear that a border wall is not the answer. The construction project reported today was appropriated, funded during the prior administration in 2019, and the law requires the government to use these funds for this purpose. Now, White House officials are rushing to the president's defense, posting, quote, the funds for about 20 miles of border reinforcements were appropriated in 2019 before the president took office. He called on Congress to reappropriate the funds for smarter, more effective enforcement uses. Congress failed to do so. Rule of law requires the project to be completed in 2023. Now, of course, in the past, guys in the White House has had some issues with the law and court rulings. They've pushed back and have vowed to fight them. See also abortion and student loans. Guys. Hey, Lucas, here's the thing. We did report two weeks ago that, or the New York Post had it, we discussed it, that they were selling off pieces of the fence right. for pennies on the dollar. This is all related. So whatever you, we had, they can't put up what they no longer have. Weren't they violating the spirit or the actual sanctity of that law by doing that? It sounds like they need to use those uh, funds to buy that uh, those portions of the wall back yeah. there, Brian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make some bids. And the technology. Indeed. Uh, Lucas, thank you very much. Thanks, you know, Lucas. I, I was talking to Griff about this yesterday. Uh, those portions of the wall that are rusting in the desert, that's not what they're going to put up here. They're going to put up something uh, not 30 feet high, but maybe 15 to 18 feet high, essentially Jersey barriers. Yeah. Uh, and they're more, they're more flexible, they're so movable. it's it's not the stuff they've already paid for. But you know, for them to say, look, it's uh, and the Congress did this. We have no choice. That's just a lot of malarkey, as Joe Biden would say. Look, you know, ultimately, what has happened is, I don't think uh, I don't think Joe Biden ever thought he would get this kind of a backlash because this has completely backfired on him. He never imagined that. Uh, Mayors in big Democratic cities and mayors and governors in Democratic states would demand a change, but these images are killing him. Right now, Joe Biden has a 23% approval rating on the border. And so, keep in mind, we're about a year away from election, uh, and he's tanking in the polls, so what's he going to do? He's going to pivot. Don't admit it, just change the optics, build a, an inch of wall, 
and say you're deporting people, which they won't do. It's all about changing the message so they can say in the run-up to the election, hey, look. So he's not even using nope, that fence? not using that. Look at that. My favorite part of the press briefing yesterday, we we're going to get to Peter Ducey, was the Telemundo reporter saying, uh, didn't you break your promise to the immigrants? You mean the illegal yeah. immigrants that are coming across the border? Then she goes, she says, uh, what about the environment? So where was this reporter when uh, Palestine was happening? And all those folks, oh, yeah. because of the crash there, yeah. no mention of that. But, of course, the one reporter that's always asking questions to KJP is Peter Ducey. As a candidate, President Biden didn't say there will not be another foot of wall constructed that uh, except what was appropriated in 2019. He said there will not be another foot of wall constructed in my administration. So something changed. What? You want us to break the law. Is that what you want? You want us to not comply with the law? I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm asking you want, about 